Hey, sports card fans, it's John Wade Boggs fan. Hope you're all doing well. A hybrid baseball card release that could also act as an interactive display piece, 1934-36 Batter Up is a rather odd set with a minimal design, two different card sizes, and multiple color variations. Given their intended purpose to be folded into a stand, high grades remain tough to find, but the die-cut vintage set still sees strong interest from collectors. Part of the National Chickle lineup, 1934-36 batter-up cards were designed with kids in mind. The simple card has a die-cut portion that can be folded down in half and seemingly bring the stars of the league to life. Of course, many kids were all too happy to play a game with their favorite players, folding and even tearing away the die-cut area. This has resulted in a premium for high-grade examples. Another thing that makes the batter-up set peculiar is the card sizing among the 192 cards. The first 80 cards in the set, released in 1934, measured 2 and 3 eighths by 3 and a quarter inches, while the remaining cards available in 1935 and 1936 are slightly shorter at 2 and 3 eighths by 3 inches. These smaller cards are also more difficult to find in mint condition. All the batter-up cards were officially designated as R318. Featuring a very basic design, the batter-up card fronts include a black and white photo with a small text area in the bottom corner. This includes the batter-up brand name, as well as the player's name, team, position, and card number. The series releases have slightly different text areas, with the most notable difference being that the low series cards feature a white background and have what appear to be handwritten numbers. Also, the low number cards tend to only list the player's last name. The card backs for both versions are blank. While the batter up cards themselves are on the plain side outside of the die cut, multiple color tints give the 192 card set more depth and offer an early chance of collecting a rainbow. In addition to the standard black tint, each player in the larger first series has red, brown, blue, purple, and green versions. The high number cards come in black, brown, blue, and green. The batter up checklist does contain a good mix of Hall of Fame names from the era, including Jimmy Fox, Dizzy Dean, and Rogers Hornsby but represents another instance where a few big names were left out. In addition to the absence of Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig was not featured due to his deal with Gowdy. One final notable aspect of the batter up set is the multiplayer cards. Only found among the high numbers, three cards display two players on the same card with die cuts for both. Both players are also specifically noted as well. In this video, I'm going to show the top 10 most valuable cards from the 1934-36 batter up set based on their PSA 3 values. I'll also give the values of those cards in higher grades as well as the population count of those grades. Now, as a side note, because some cards have very low population counts, the values in some grades might not reflect current prices since it may be a year or two or even more since a copy in that grade has been sold. In those cases, the prices shown for the card is from the most recent sale in VCP's database. Now, before I get to the top 10, here are the cards that just missed the top 10. At number 15, the Carl Hubble card. At number 14, the Gus Sir card. At number 13, the Jimmy Fox card. At number 12, the Dan Taylor card. And at number 11, the Mel Ott card. So which cards made the top 10 list? Let's go find out. Coming in at number 10, we have the Travis Jackson card. In a PSA 3, there have only been five graded copies with a current VCP average price of $180. There have only been five graded APSA 4, the last one selling for $32. There have been five graded APSA 5, the last one selling for $175. 
There have been seven graded A PSA 6, the last one selling for $240. There have been six graded A PSA 7, the last one selling for $233. There have only been two graded A PSA 8, the last PSA 8 sale took place in April of 2024 through REA and sold for $720. And just like every card on this top 10 list, there has not been a PSA 9 or 10 graded copy of the Travis Jackson card. At number 9, we have the Lefty Grove card. In a PSA 3, there have been 22 graded copies with a current VCP average price of $198. There have been 23 graded a PSA 4, the last one selling for $289. There have been 11 graded a PSA 5, the last one selling for $255. There have been 8 graded a PSA 6, the last one sold for $410. There have only been 5 graded a PSA 7, the last one sold for $504. And there have been three graded a PSA 8. The only PSA 8 sale in VCP's database took place in November of 2015 through Heritage and sold for $896. At number 8, we have the Bill Dickey card. In a PSA 3, there have been 7 graded copies with a current VCP average price of $200. There have only been seven graded a PSA 4, the last one selling for $228. There have been nine graded a PSA 5, the last one selling also for $228. There have been nine graded a PSA 6, the last one selling for $280. There have only been two graded a PSA 7, the last one selling for $588. There have been five graded a PSA 8. The last PSA 8 sale took place in October of 2022 through eBay and sold for $1,010. At number 7, we have the Mo Berg card. In a PSA 3, there have only been one graded copy with a average price of $203. There have only been five graded a PSA 4. The last one selling for $239. There have been nine graded a PSA 5. The last one sold for $910. There have been five graded a PSA 6. The last one sold for $700. There have been four graded a PSA 7. The last PSA 7 sale took place in May of 2020 through Heritage and sold for $930. There hasn't been a card graded a PSA 8. At number 6, we have the Hack Wilson card. In a PSA 3, there have been 9 graded copies with a current VCP average price of $255. There have been 14 graded a PSA 4, the last one sold for $216. There have been 7 graded a PSA 5, the last one selling for $89. There have been 10 graded a PSA 6, the last one sold for $504. There have been 6 graded a PSA 7, the last one sold for $950. There's only been 1 graded a PSA 8, the only PSA 8 sale in VCP's database took place in November of 2015 through Heritage and sold for $478. Coming in at number 5, we have the Rogers Hornsby card. In a PSA 3, there have been 27 graded copies, with a current VCP average price of $269. There have been 20 graded a PSA 4, the last one selling for $440. There have been 25 graded a PSA 5, the last one selling for $420. There have been 11 graded a PSA 6, the last one sold for $690. There have been only three graded a PSA 7, the last one selling for $930. There have only been two graded a PSA 8, the last PSA 8 sale took place in May of 2020 through Heritage and sold for $1,380 
placing the Rogers Hornsby at the number three spot in terms of PSA 8 graded copies on this top 10 list. At number four, we have the Dizzy Dean card. In the PSA 3, there have been 23 graded copies with a current VCP average price of $300. There have been 30 graded at PSA 4, the last one selling for $352. There have also been 30 graded at PSA 5, with the last one selling for $364. There have been 20 graded at PSA 6, the last one selling for $455. There have been 11 graded a PSA 7, the last one selling for $780. There have been 10 graded a PSA 8, the last PSA 8 sale took place in April of 2024 through REA and sold for $1,200, placing the Dizzy Dean also at the number 4 spot in terms of PSA 8 graded copies on this list. At number 3, we have the Luke Appling card. In a PSA 3, there have been 7 graded copies, with a current VCP average price of $300. There have only been 5 graded a PSA 4. The last sale was for $108. There have been 12 graded a PSA 5. The last sale was for $175. There have been 6 graded a PSA 6. The last one selling for $153. There have only been 3 graded a PSA 7. The last one selling for $348. There's only been one graded a PSA 8. The last PSA 8 sale took place in November of 2015 through Heritage and sold for $1,195, placing the Luke Appling at the number 5 spot in terms of PSA 8 graded copies on this list. At number 2, we have the Hank Greenberg card. In a PSA 3, there have been 11 graded copies, with a current VCP average price of $645. There have been 18 graded a PSA 4, the last one selling for $1,320. There have been 17 graded a PSA 5, the last one selling for $1,081. There have been 26 graded a PSA 6, the last one selling for $431. There have been only four graded a PSA 7, the last one selling for $2,510. There have been eight graded a PSA 8, the last PSA 8 sale took place in December of 2020 through Golden and sold for $2,583, placing the Hank Greenberg at the number one spot in terms of PSA 8 graded copies on this list. And at number one, we have the Joe Medwick card. In a PSA 3, there have only been three graded copies with a current VCP average price of $810. There have been eight graded a PSA 4, the last one selling for $150. There have been six graded a PSA 5, the last one selling for $223. There have only been three graded a PSA 6, the last one selling for $384. There have been six graded a PSA 7, the last one selling for $3,585. And there's only been one graded a PSA 8, the only PSA 8 sale in VCP's database took place in May of 2020 through Heritage and sold for $1,800, placing the Joe Medwick at the number 2 spot in terms of PSA 8 graded copies on this list. Well, there you go, the top 10 most valuable cards from the 1934-36 to batter up set. As always, would love to know what you think about the set and the cards that made the top 10 list. And stay tuned for next week's episode in which I take a look at the top 10 most valuable cards from the 1941 double play set. And if you've missed either of the last two videos in this series, you can check them out right here. With that, that's all I have for you. So until next time, thanks for watching.